Games often need to find a way to make characters or other objects visible through solid walls. Many 3D platformers opt to move the camera past the wall, whereas in stealth games, enemies can be rendered over the walls for x-ray vision. Today, we'll see how we can cut a hole in the wall itself using a special shader and a bit of raycasting. If you end up liking this video and are looking for more shader graph breakdowns, then subscribe to my channel using the subscribe button below the video. Let's get into the shader. Let's create a new shader by right clicking in the project view and selecting Create, Shader, Universal Render Pipeline, Lit Shader Graph. I'm using Unity 2020.2, so on earlier versions it'll be Create, Shader, PBR Graph instead. I've named it Wall Cutout. This shader needs to replicate the basic functionality of the standard lit shader, although for demonstration purposes I'll only handle the base colour properties. We will add three properties here. One is a texture 2D, which we'll name main texture. The next is a vector 2 called tiling, with a default value of 1 1, which means that the texture tiles once across the mesh. The third new property is a vector 2 called offset, which will have a default value of 0 0. We need to sample the main texture, so right click to search for a sample texture 2D node, then drag main texture onto the graph and connect it to the texture slot. We will also slot a new tiling and offset node into the UV input and connect the tiling property to the tiling slot, and the offset property to, you guessed it, the offset slot. Let's drag the RGBA colour output of the sample texture node into the base colour pin on the output node. On earlier versions of shader graph, this might be called albedo instead. You can do the same process for metallic, smoothness, emission and so on if you wish, but I won't do this here. Now we need to work out exactly where to perform the cutout. The location of the object that we want to see through the walls will be sent to the shader via scripting. Our approach here will be to compare that with the screen space position of each pixel, and if it is within a certain distance, we will call that pixel. For that, we need even more properties. A vector 2 called cutout position, a float called cutout size, and another float called falloff size. In other versions of shader graph, use a vector 1 instead of a float. Since we'll be changing those via scripting, make sure you change their reference IDs in the node settings window. I used underscore cutout pause, underscore cutoff size, and underscore falloff size respectively. For the culling step, we will use an alpha cutoff, so go to the graph settings window and tick alpha clip. This enables the shader to cull pixels based on their alpha values. You might need to add the alpha and alpha clip threshold pins manually to the output node, so right click inside the node, and search for the names to add them. Screen space UVs go from 0 to 1 horizontally and vertically across the screen, so we need to take the aspect ratio of the screen into account to make sure that the cutout is circular. We will start by adding a screen node, which will give us the width and height of the screen in pixels, and we'll divide the width by the height. This gives us the aspect ratio. Next, we will get the screen position of the pixel being rendered. Start with a screen position node, which gives us the screen space UV of the current pixel, and then use a split node to separate its output vector. We only need the X and Y components, and we need to divide the Y component by the aspect ratio. Then we can funnel the unmodified X component and the divided Y component into a new vector2 node. We need to do the same to the cutout position by dragging the cutout position property onto the graph, and then doing the same process with split, divide, and vector2 nodes. Once we've got both, we will calculate the distance between the two. You could make this more complicated if you'd like. Say, if you wanted a square cutout, you would want to check the taxicab distance between the two. But we will just use a distance node to get the Euclidean distance, or the distance in a straight line, between both. Now we can perform the cutout. We could just stick the distance into a step node's in slot with the cutout size in the edge slot, which would give us a sharp circle. Instead, I want to add the option to have a dithered falloff around the cutout circle. We're going to use Smooth Step, where the distance is connected to the in slot. Smooth Step is a sigmoid function that returns 0 if the in input is below the first edge parameter, 1 if the in input is over the second edge parameter, and between those edge values, Smooth Step is a curve between 0 and 1. We will use Cutout Size for the edge 2 parameter, and then we will use cutout size minus falloff size for edge 1. This gives us a slightly smoothed circle. We will output that to a dither node, but we need to multiply by 2 to prevent the dither node from dithering the white pixels. 
Finally, we will output this to the alpha pin on the output node and set the alpha clip threshold to 0.5. This means that any pixel whose alpha is below 0.5 gets culled. Now that the shader is complete, we can create materials with the shader and attach them to the walls. But we're not setting the cutoff position or size, so of course nothing will happen. We're gonna need to write a script to calculate where the object we want to look at is positioned in screen space. Let's create a new script by right clicking in the project view and selecting create C sharp script and name it cutout object. I'll attach it to the main camera. For the variables, we'll need a reference to the target object, which is the transform that we want to see from behind the wall. We're going to be doing a raycast between the main camera position and the target object, and we will change the material properties of anything caught in the crossfire. For that, we need a layer mask to make sure we only target walls. We will also need a reference to the camera component attached to this game object, which we will assign in a wink. To get the cutout location, we can use the camera's world to viewport point method and pass in the target object position. This method returns the position of the object in screen space in a format that we can easily compare with screen space UVs. That's convenient. We need to divide by the aspect ratio using the screen width and height in the same way we did in the shader. And then we can perform the raycast by calculating an offset vector between the camera and the target and then starting the raycast at the camera in that direction. The physics.raycastall method returns an array of raycast hit objects which should each contain data about a wall. We can iterate through the list of raycast hits, and for each one, we will access the renderer component and grab its list of materials. We really ought to check if the render actually exists first, but hey, this isn't production code, right? We get the list of materials in case the renderer has more than one attached. For each material, we can set the cutout pos, cutout size, and fall off size. We're not doing anything special for the cutout size or fall off size because we're just keeping the cutout circle the same size on screen all the time, but you could include code to make the circle smaller or larger here. Back in the scene view, I've attached colliders to the walls and given them all a layer called walls. The cutout object script on the main camera will also use that layer for its layer mask, and we will attach an object to the target object slot then we can see the effect in action. This effect was a ton of fun to figure out. I've seen other approaches to this effect using a stencil buffer before, so I wanted to try out an alternative method, and I was surprised it worked out so well. For more tutorials like this, subscribe to my channel using the subscribe button below the video, and check out my other videos. And if you want to fund the coffee habit responsible for these videos' existence, support me on Patreon too. The people whose names are on screen are my biggest supporters, and I'm massively grateful for your support. The next shader video will probably be all about snow layering on objects. It's been snowing in England lately, so it feels thematic for me. I hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching.